so glad you died for me. I'm so glad you rose just for me. So glad you shed your blood for me. Sweet Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Help me say
knowing that he's able to do all things and anything but fail. That ought to put a yes in your spirit.
God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blessing that you're bringing upon us and you're allowed to fall upon us this hour. We give you the honor and the glory. We pray, and Father, that Brother Chris, that you have mercy upon him and strengthen him and bring him through. We give you the honor and the glory. We pray, and Father, for those, the sheep that are scattered, that they be gathered together and put back into the flock of God, that they may walk with him and worship him and praise him. We demand that Satan take his hands off of these things that belongs unto the Lord. We loose them by our might. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, give us, Father, open our minds now. We have to hear this from you. And we cannot get this message unless you open our minds. In your holy and righteous name we pray, amen. May God bless you. God keep you. Be be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Well, y'all bless my soul today. Amen. Y'all bless me. Come here, let me touch you. God bless you. I love you so much, precious. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. I don't want to act too unseemly. I have this. I'm going to go into some of the depths of my mind with you today in the Word of God that you may hear and see some things that you may not often hear us see. I want to talk to you today about walking in faith. Mm. Mm. But walking in faith. I hear my daughter-in-law all the time. Uh, my wife ain't here, I'm gonna pick on her now. <laughs> I hear my daughter-in-law all the time. She walks in faith and I, I don't know if she even be aware of what she be doing or saying. And she be telling me things sometimes. She say, now, I'm going to see what I'm going to do, Daddy. I'm going to do this. And then about two years, I'm going to do this. And then I'm planning on transferring back over here and do this. That's faith. She's speaking it before it happened. And the things that she speak, I seen happen. I heard to say, well, I'm leaving here and I'm going over here. And she left there and she went over there. So she was walking in faith. 
So she has a faith walk that she may not even be aware of. She thinks it's just something that happens. Some people have faith walking and don't realize they're walking in faith. You think you're just walking. And yet you're walking in the faith of God. Let me explain something to you about faith. If you're walking down the street and you find uh, $2,000 laying on the road, and, 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 and you, that's not faith. You bless. Okay? Faith is when you're walking down the street and you're saying, God, I got to go pay this bill. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I need to go talk to these people. And you're walking down the road. You say, but God, I know you're going to make a way. And you're walking down the road and you find $2,000. That's faith. Why is that faith? Because you made the statement, God, I know you're going to make a way. And because you had the faith in God making a way, God provided you with what you needed so you have to know the difference when you're being blessed and the difference when you are walking in faith. We're talking about walking in faith, and I'm going to share some things with you. In the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the first verse, I want you to really get this scripture. I know we have heard it many times, we've read it many times, but I'm going to say some things to you today that's going to make you think. It says, now faith is a substance of things that's hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. But notice the third verse. I skipped the second for a reason because I want your mind focused. But if you look at the third verse, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Get that now. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay, we're going to kind of try to bring that out for you. Now, we read that all the time. Now, faith is a substance of things hopes up for, and the evidence of things not seen, and we go, okay. Everybody can quote that scripture. What is it talking about? The Bible is talking about you have faith. You have been faith. Let me share some things with you about faith. A person walking in faith shall never invest with a person and people who do not walk in faith. Because they will never understand you. You, when you invest with people who don't have faith, they would hinder the work of your faith in God. If you walking in faith and you invest in, you need to invest with people who have faith. Faith is scary, crazy, and unknown. Hear what I'm telling you. Faith is scary, crazy, and unknown. I am where I am because of faith. The Bible says the righteous man's footsteps are ordered by God. Help me out. They are ordered by God. God guides your footsteps. You have to understand walking with God is a lot of things that you do that you don't know why you do it, why you did what you did, but you did what you did to make you come out to what you came out to. Most people do not like people who walk in faith. Most people who walk in faith, people do not like them because, number one, they do not understand them. They do not understand them because they talk crazy, walk crazy, act crazy. Because they are not just guided by the wisdom of man, but they are, they are guided by the power of God. God give every man a measurement of faith, but those who walk with him, he give them a measure of faith and power. Mm. He give them faith and power. First Corinthians 2 and 14, 4, 2 and 4, read that for me. First Corinthians 2 and 4. 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. 
I'm sorry, I didn't give that scripture to you first. I'm sorry. Now, see, I didn't have all these fancy words and enticing you and sound good. And, 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 and my preaching is not with the wisdom of man. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Now, it's a demonstration of the spirit and power. Now, let me explain something to you. There are a lot of intelligent people, very smart people, people that, man, I wish I had the education that they had. They are very bright and knowledgeable people, but, and, 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 and they make you think they walk in wisdom because they're so intelligent. And they will make you believe they're walking in wisdom, and really they're walking in knowledge. They're walking in the knowledge of the education or the abilities that they have. And some people are walking in worldly wisdom, man wisdom, but they do not have power. Even those with the best of education, they need power. Even a president, do you ever know those presidents, they smart enough, they got somebody in the background that's in prayer warrior? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, did, did you know that? They have all the authority in the world that the handle thing, and yet they got a prayer warrior, someone that they go to that they communicate with. Because they have, they know that with all that knowledge, with all that they have, they need some spiritual wisdom. Hear what I'm trying to tell you. Don't try to rely on you being smart. You need God. Don't rely on just your education. You need God. Don't rely just on your money. You need God. Because if you don't be careful, the money will dis disappear and your mind will get confused. You need God. I stand where I stand not because I am such an intelligent man. I stand where I stand because of the call of God and because I walk in the faith of God, stupid enough to believe God when that was, did not make sense. But I believed him. I believe God, let me tell you something. When I was sit in the house and I tell my wife, I hear somebody coming to the house. And my wife would look and for long a knock would come on the door. Where it happened, I, I was walking in a faith in God and being able to see things and hear things before they happen. Now watch this. You have to be careful because you'll fool around and put that faith on the shelf and you'll lose it. You can have it and lose it. If you don't believe me, the Bible say Adam. Watch this. By faith, Adam could hear God walking in the garden. By faith, God, Adam heard God walking in the garden. God is a spirit, but yet by faith, Adam heard him walk in the garden in the cool of the evening. But Adam fooled around and lost that, that faith in God that he didn't no longer hear him walk in the garden no more. Don't put your faith on the shelf. God give every man a measurement of faith, and if you don't be careful, you'll put your faith on the shelf. And when you put your faith on the shelf, you start depending on your own thoughts and the way you think and what you ought to do, and there's no hope. What can cause a person to put their faith on? A broken heart will make you put your faith down. A woman get her heart broke, a man get his heart broke, and they would lose faith in God because of a broken heart. Children can make you lose your faith. You so focus on them, they what they're doing and what they're not doing, until you lose focus on your relationship with God and your faith in God. You need faith. Let me tell you how faith is. Let, let, let's look at some things. Uh, the Bible said that God had to have Abraham. He tells Abraham, say, Abraham, I want you to leave home. 
I want you to leave and go. And Abraham, like, where am I going? Your footsteps are ordered by God. Just go. Just go. Abraham gets up and leave and start traveling to a destiny. By faith, Abraham become the father of many nations. By faith. Just because he got up and done something, God say, go, he went. It may sometimes God speak on your heart to tell you to do something. The Lord telling me that I, I need to just move. And you saying, nah, nah, nah. he don't have no money. And he's talking about God told him. Let me share something with you. And God told me years ago, I have been living where I lived on, on Farm Road 565 ever since I was two years old. Never flooded there. Never flooded in, in, in the home over there. Hurricane call or storms and whatever, never. God told me to leave that place. I was born, that place is my heirs. That's my grandmother in them place, or my aunt in them. And, 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 and I, surely this ain't God telling me to leave. And God told me to leave that place. I don't know. It can't be God. I mean, this, 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 this family. It was the very next year, for the first time, a flood came and the water came into our house. And I tell people this, my God, I can't, I can't. I know, I, I, I think I got pictures of it. There is what, as, but with the eight foot fence in front of the house, and the water was over that fence. My house sitting here, but only six inches of water got in the house. Now, hear what I'm telling you. God knows as I stand here, I tell you the truth. An eight foot fence, but only six inches of water got in the house. Enough for God to say, Didn't I tell you to leave? How that water held back, I don't know. But it held back, only six inches came in the house. The following year, I told my wife, we're getting ready to get out of here. She said, you're going to let us. I said, I don't care what happened to the place, we're leaving. I know God told me to go, and I didn't go. He sent me one warning, I say Go. He didn't have to talk to me again. I hear you, Lord. I got my stuff up and show you how awesome God is. I said, oh, my wife, let's go look for a piece of property. We left the place, drove down the road off of Bohemian Hall Road, and the girl was putting a sign up for sale. I said, you want to sell this place? She said, yes. I said, I'll buy it. Didn't even talk about price. I'll buy it. I just got to go. <laughs> God didn't got me. He scared me enough. I know how powerful he is. And she said, okay, I'm going to take the sign down. Well, anyway, long story, she asked for this. Then I came to myself. <laughs> and, and I told her, I say, I'm not going to pay you that for it. And she said, well, okay, I'll take off 10000 And I said, no, I'll take off 20000 And she said, look, I can just put it for sale to see if I can get what I'm, uh, and I said, well, okay, I'll take it. So I, anyway, I bought the property, and we ended up moving there. By faith, that's what we've done. Yeah. Now, show me how God operates by obeying God. I got there. Then her brother had another eight, nine acres that he practically gave to me. You see, when you obey God, God will open up doors for you that you can't imagine. He would do things for you that you can't imagine he'll do. And because I took the step and walked in faith, 
didn't know where I was going, didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew God say, go. And I left. Sometimes you have to do. Sometimes God tells you to get away from some of your kin folks. You, 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 but you, you hang right in there with them because, you know, that's my little brother. Well, okay, go ahead. So Abraham goes. David, here's a man that's tending sheep. And the sheep not even his. David don't own anything. David is not a person who looked like he, uh, he just a little rag boy. God tells David, you're going to be king of Israel. Wow. What? I'm just a tender of somebody else's sheep. But God says to him, you're going to be king of Israel. And if God's going to make David king, listen to what God is saying. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care if you live in the worst slum area in the area. I am God, and I can take you to places and heights that you can't imagine if you just have faith in me. If you just believe that I am and I can, I will take you to places. Some of you have already made in your mind because of the condition of your parents and the way they live, you're supposed to live like you live. Maybe that's not so. God, if you have faith in God, God can bring you out of poverty situation into wealth. And it's all done by faith. Many times we settle for less because we cannot picture in our mind getting out of the condition that we're in because we don't have the faith, the trust in God to bring us out. God said, I want to elevate you, but you got to believe that I am that I am and I can do what I say. If you don't have that kind of faith. But notice something. David becomes king of Israel, and it didn't happen overnight. When God started working with David to become king of Israel, David went downhill and not uphill. He found himself that Saul was against him, the very man that he tried to help the very person that he cared about, the person he sat by his bedside and sung to him and played music for him, want to kill him. What I'm trying to tell you, sometime when God getting ready to elevate you, he will take you down through something before he take you up to something. And you have to understand that. And what happens with a lot of people, they put the faith on the shelf, and they give up because when he take them down, they feel like they have lost connections with God, but God cannot be disconnected from. No matter how low he take you, if he make your bed in hell, guess what? He going there with you. The God that we serve is such an awesome God that when he take you down, don't worry about it. Keep trusting in him. Keep believing him because he has to take you down and break you before he take you up because you'll come a fool if he don't. He's trying to empower you. God takes you down to break you to empower you. And he's trying to empower you because when he bring you up, he wants you to come up with power, with authority. You hear what I'm trying to tell you? God is an awesome God. You have to know who you are and whose you are, and you won't know that until you go down. And you find that out when you come up, who I am. And what authority I have and what power I hold. Women, if you're married to an anointed man, you are married to something crazy. He will do crazy things. 
He will take, and if you ever know that he gets a grip, and you can't break it, because he is made sound, he's made strong. If you got a wimp, pray for him. He ain't got there yet. Mm. Yes. Moses, see, sometimes when God get ready to put this faith that he wants you to walk in, he sometimes get people that, that don't seem to qualify. The Bible said that he called Moses and said, Moses, I want you to go. I got faith in you. And I want you to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses started, God, God, God I, I don't even speak well. And, 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 and Moses gets to telling God all of his problems and why he's not qualified. And the whole time Moses talking about why he's not qualified, God is instead of saying, and when you get there, what I want you to do. And Moses said, Lord, but see, Lord, I... I I, I've been there before, and God said, now, and make sure to tell Pharaoh, God have us stop talking to Moses. The whole time Moses complaining about what he can't do, God is still talking. Some of you complaining to God about your faults, and God's still telling you this is what he wants you to do, and this is the way you need to go. Because God is still talking. Some of you done told God already, well, see, God, I just done got too old for this. And God said, and when you get there, here's what I want you to do. <laughs> I, I, but, but, but God, you see, God, uh, I, I'm just tired. He said, yeah, I know you're tired, but, but when you get there, make sure you're making all these complaints and God is saying, your footsteps are ordered by me. Yeah. And if you don't believe it, you run that way and see when you fall in that hole, don't you climb out over here. See, God saying your footsteps are ordered by God. We think we plan our life. We think we have set our destiny. And God saying your future and your past and your presence is all in my hands. I'm the Lord thy God. Did you hear God saying that I can swallow the whole earth and spit out what I don't want into hell? I am such an awesome God. You have to understand who I am. And oh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Now watch this. God creates. No, we're going to get there. we get there. Let, let, let me see. Noah. God tells Noah, I want you to build me a boat, a ship, an ark. It didn't say to Noah, build it close to the river. Build it where on a hill close to the ocean where you can slide it down. If he had done that, it would have been more understandable saying where he's going to build it, and I can tell the way he got it on the hill, he's going to slide that thing down with some of the elephants or something and push it in the water. But he builds it on dry land away from the water. Now you know, you know y'all was over there looking at Noah saying, Noah said, he say God told him to do that. That's what he say God say. Noah had his faith in God. And if God say do it, Noah say I'm going to do it. I don't know what, how, or what, but God say do it. And y'all was saying, he ain't got a billing permit. <laughs> and he going to build that thing. you walk about it every day, shaking your head. <laughs> He's building that thing. And look how big it is. You can't move it. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. And Noah kept on building because his faith was in God. 
You see, you have to keep building on your life because your faith is in God. You have to not stop because of your age. You cannot stop building on your life and your relationship with God because you're disappointed, because somebody left you. You can't stop building because somebody, the job laid you off and you're going to throw your hands up and go live under the bridge. Please, don't you know God got other jobs? If you would just open up your eyes, do you know that, that I had opportunities? I told my son when, when he, he got laid off, and I said, here's how God works, son. He said, but I ain't hearing from nobody. I said, you won't until they all get ready. I said, when God tell them, hire him, that voice from God goes to people hiring. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Have you ever noticed that you're looking for a job and then nobody calls you and all at once several people call and say, hey, we want to interview you. We want to, you know why? Because when God said, hire him, that voice goes out to all the people hiring. And this company call you, this company call you, this one say, we want to talk with you. Why? Because they all heard the voice of God say, hire him, and they all reach out to you. When nothing was happening because no God hadn't spoke yet. Therefore, you were saying, and I went here and I put an application. I can't get a job nowhere and nobody hired me. And, and, and God said, not yet. I'll tell them when. Wow. Wow. And when he say when, then my son come back and say, man, bear call me, this place call me, and this, I don't know where to go now. And I say, then survey it. Always take the job with the oldest people on it. He said, well, Bear Young, and, you know, they grew up. I say, this company over here got a lot of old people working there. They getting ready to die. And what ain't going to die, going to retire. And you're going to elevate quickly. And he say, yeah. I say, listen, I'm telling you, I'm talking wisdom now. I'm talking. See, see when you talk wisdom, y'all don't like to talk about death and all that. Baby, it's real. So he takes the place where the people are going to die with him. And what didn't retire, what didn't die, retired. And he went, Phew. See how God worked? Wisdom. If you went over here where all these young people was, you've been in the struggle of them deciding whether they want to keep you or spending the rest of your life to try to move up. First thing you a lot of people would have said, I don't want to go over there. Ain't nothing but a lot of old, old people there. That's why I want to go. Because they're getting ready to die and retire. And get what that mean? I'm elevated. Wisdom. Wisdom. So he went there, and sure enough, God just blessed him tremendously. Always follow the direction of God and you won't go wrong. Nor builds the ship, the boat. And after he get through building, God's saying, okay, go in, shut the door, I got it from here. When you get through building what God has for you with your life, God will tell you, shut the door. I got it from here. He's ready to do your thing for you. All you got to do is rip, reap the benefit of it when you walk in faith with God. The Bible said, and I want to go back to Abraham. The Bible said when Abraham was tried by God, and God told Abraham, I want you to take your lad. It's in Genesis 22nd chapter. If you were at uh, uh, Genesis 22, Notice something. Abraham, whether we know it or not, Abraham had faith in the resurrection and the power of God raising the dead before we even heard about it. If you don't believe me, look at it in Genesis 22. In the second verse of Genesis 22, God told Abraham, go and offer up your son. Abraham, by faith, he goes to the mountain of Moriah to offer up his son. But look in the fifth verse. He tells the men, he say, I want y'all to stand here 
and stay right here because the, the, the lad and I is going up to worship God and we will return back to you. What did Abraham say? God just say, go and sacrifice your son. Abraham says, I'm going and do what God said, but we be back. So Abraham, by faith, saying, if I kill him, the God that I believe in, I have faith that he's able to raise him. And even though I kill him, when I get ready to come down off of this mountain, God's going to raise him up, and I'm going to come back down with him. Read it in the scripture, what he just said. It is there. So Abraham was walking in a faith, and you say, well, was he going to kill his son? He was going to kill him by faith because he believed in faith in God, and he believed in the resurrection for the resurrection was even taught. He believed that God held the power to raise up. Jesus had rose from the dead, and some of us still don't believe it. Mm. That's what make Abraham a father of nations, because he could believe that which had no sign, no evidence. He could believe it. Where's your faith? Everything got to have a sign or evidence for you to believe it. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mark the 11th chapter 22 say, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Now, let me close this thing out. The Bible says that in the beginning, God, by faith, God created through his word the heaven and the earth. Walk with me for a few minutes by faith. He spoke it and it was. The scripture make it clear the things that you see are not made by the things that appear. Trees does not come from trees. Trees come from God. God spoke one time, and he didn't say pine tree, peach tree, pear tree. He called the trees forth, and they all blossom. And they've been doing it ever since. He spoke it by faith, and it was been so. So then, all things, the trees and the animals, is the faith of God. And if they are the faith of God, then God made man. And when he made man, man become a living soul when God empowers him with his spirit. He become a living soul when God empowers him. When you become a living soul because of God empowering you, you become God's faith. God came into the garden one day looking for his faith, which was Adam. And his faith was not found because it had been put on the shelf by Satan. And he, God could not find his faith. And he said, where art thou? And what did you say? God said, because Adam, I have faith in you. Don't fail me. And where have you gone? Because I had faith in you, and you was in me. And the scriptures say, I was in God, and God in me. So then faith is God, and the things that are made is of faith, which is God. Then man must be of faith, because man is 
of God. And if man is of faith, you are greater than you think. But what happened is you have lost your power. The Bible says that the faith must have the power, and the power is the anointing of God. And without it, it is the wisdom of man, and that's why man do great things, but they are not powerful people. God wants you to be more than just great. He wants you to be powerful. He wants you to be able to bind and loosen. And the reason we can't bind and loose, the reason we can't loosen because we have gotten to the place when I say in the name of Jesus I command that that thing be bind. My neighbor say to me who you think you are? You don't have the power. And then I let my faith die with inside of me because I listen to the wisdom of a man who say that don't make sense. When God said if you would have spoken I gave you the faith of a mother the seed. You don't need much of what I'm going to give you. If you just take what I got you and empower yourself and let my faith go down inside of you. Woman, you are a single woman. You can speak a man into your life and to come. I am, I want a husband and then you need to draw it out. I want him to be like this, this, this and this, and I command it not by my power, but by the Spirit of God. And God have a man that can fit that bill, and you'll be surprised. God will tell you, get up and go. And you say, where I'm going? And God may say, join the Air Force. And you say, I don't want to go to the Air Force. And you join the Air Force. And when you get an Air Force, you can fly to him back too. And there that man stand there, look at you, and you look at him, and y'all smile at each other, and he fits the bill of what you just said. God say your footsteps are ordered by me. I am the Lord thy God. You don't have what you have because you won't ask me. You trusting in your friend. Hook me up with him. He'll get, and then, no, no, yeah, no, that's why you ain't got it. And they hook you up with something that you don't want to be hooked up with. God said, you didn't tell me to hook you up with nothing. You don't hook everybody else. You calling on the on line. Let me call and see. And you got the line that you're calling, talking to these people, hooking up with somebody. God said, here I am. Yeah. Your faith needs to be in me. Yeah. I give you what you need. Yeah. But God, I'm getting old. He said, I don't want to give you one until you get old. <laughs> so you don't know how to act with it while you're young. Yeah. I'm going to give you what you need when you get old. I'm going to give you companionship. Mm. I'm talking about faith in God. It's a deep thing. It's deeper than you can imagine. It is real deep. Don't lose your faith. Don't put it on the shelf. Don't let the things of the world shake you up. Speak what you're going to do. I got plans. I'm 72 years old. And my wife and boy said, what you going to do with all this land? I'm going to put a horse stall over there. I'm putting some cows over there. I'm putting some goats over there and a chicken pen over there. And they're looking at me like... They go back there, I got my horse barn bill with a horse in it. <laughs> Working on the chicken coop. And they say, you're 72. I'll take my walker and go get the eggs. <laughs> when I get through, I'll have the chicken coop, and I won't need no strength to pick the eggs up. Amen. And they say, what you going to do with the ghosts? Play with them. I just want them because I can have them. I find out I can have whatever I want in God. So I just tell him what I want, speak it in faith, and I just have it. I have all kind of toys and junk. Why? Because of God that I serve. He meets my needs and give me my wants. Yeah. You see what I'm telling you? Yeah. That's my daddy. Yeah. That's my daddy. My daddy don't only meet my needs. He give me what I want, and I'm a small child. I just be just getting the oh. Yeah. Amen. I, because that's how I walk with him. That's how I trust in him. I walk with him that way. I trust in him that way. See, you still let him trying to give you your needs. Baby, you ought to get some of them wants. Amen. 
you got to faith. walk with him that way. Quit all this, I'm, but I'm sick. I'm sick too. All of us are sick. Everybody in here is sick. Amen. You're sick. Don't fool yourself. All, every last one of us is sick. I ain't got time for sickness. I'm busy. I get up sometimes, roll out of bed. I, I don't even get out of bed like I used to. I roll out of bed and I, and I can't jump up like I used to. I roll out of bed and sit there for a while. Get it together. And then I get up and go. By faith, I stand up and walk to the restroom. You see, I'm learning now. Everything I do is by faith. It's by faith. I walk by faith. I live by faith, and I'm going to die by faith because I trust in God. I believe in my everything. He meet all my needs. I'll never beg for bread because the scripture said it, and I believe the word of God. I walk in faith. I believe in faith. I believe that Jesus Christ came and walked on the face of this earth my faith, I believe that he came and they punished him just like they said. In faith, I believe that. And I believe that he was crucified and put in a tomb. I believe that. And not only that, I believe on the third day. Now, let me share one thing with you and I'm going to be done. Never say Christ died. Jesus died. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You done messed us up. Christ is the anointing of God, which the anointing of God cannot die. Jesus was the fleshly body of God, and the body died. Jesus died, but the anointing didn't. According to Scripture, the anointing went down in Hades, and set free those who was in hell. Yep. He went down in Hades and set them free. And that's when he's come back and he'd say to the devil, where's thy stinger? I hold all power in heaven and earth in my hands. You see, I can walk through hell and God will go with me. Amen. <laughs> Why? Because I'm his. He in me, and I'm in him. And if he in me, and I'm in him, there's no way I can go. He don't go. Amen. That's the reason I ain't going to carry him to the nightclub. Uh-oh. That's the reason. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm through now. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> if that one may not know Christ and the pardons of their sin and want to give their life to God, I give you this opportunity. You got to learn to walk in faith. Little education, no education. Walk in faith. Speak to God and tell him what you want. Talk to him. If, if, if you really want to see how your faith walk, trust God. Write down. Here's what I want, God, I believe in you'll do for me. Write it down, fold it up, stick it in your Bible. And come back and say, God gave me that very thing. Yep. He's also God. I'll tell you something about James. James was walking with a limp. And, and Jesus walking with Jesus. And Jesus was healing all these people. And one of the disciples looked at him and said, James, why he haven't healed you? And James looked and he said, I mentioned it to him. But he didn't hear me and he didn't say nothing. Hmm. Jesus said, I, I just want to know, if I don't do it, will you stay with me? Oh, man. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes God don't do things just to see if you love him enough to stay with him. Sometimes he, he just won't do it. Paul said it himself. Dear God, that's, that's a thorn in my side. Would you move it? And what he said to Paul, nah, my grace is sufficient. Leave it there. If God would make you perfect, 
you'll be too holy for him to use. Oh, come on, talk about it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> and therefore, if he have not made you perfect, you have no room to condemn or talk about me. Nobody else. Is there one? Nobody. Come. Nobody. May God bless you. God keep you. Amen. <laughs> Brother Rick. Please stand. Do you have something? I'm sorry. Sorry. If you want your kid or grandkid, whoever goes here, to get an Easter speech, please text me and let me know, and I will send you one today. Um, I didn't print them out. My printer was acting up this morning, but if you want something, I will send it to you today. Um, Easter is on the 31st of this month, so I want to make sure you have it and have no time to practice. So um, just like, text me if you don't have my number. Everybody don't have my number. Um, but if you don't, like, give it somebody to catch me after church and I'll give it to you. But just let me know so I can uh, get you a speech. Thanks. Any other announcements? If you, if you would, please stand. Oh, Heavenly Father, we give you honor and we give you glory. Father, we just pray that we don't put our faith on the shelf. Father, we shall walk with you and believe that you can do all things, exceedingly abundantly, but all we can ask or think. Father, we thank you for the word that came forth today. Father, we just ask that you give us strength, the wisdom to apply to our lives. God, we honor you and we thank you that we may go out, that others may see the works that we do, and that we may be able to glorify you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his glorious presence. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, his now and forever. And let the church say, Amen.